All the way back in 2007, 195 pounds would get you a Tascam control surface interface thingy. Sound on sound liked it, and they said it was easy to use, had really good audio performance. More importantly, it was portable. I bought it for the spinny wheel. And here it is. This is the Tascam Fire 1. Part audio interface and part MIDI control surface. 13 years before PreSonus released their IO Station 24C. Did a video on that one. Go check it out. So what do we have? Well, we got these two preamps. Each of these have about 53 dB of gain on tab. Bankable phantom power for each channel. Same for the pads. Not one, but two. Headphone volume controls because it supports two sets of headphones. How neat is that? Guitar in. That's hanging out. We got the connectivity light. And of course, a little dial to switch between live monitoring and what you would be getting back from the PC and adjustable line out volumes for the back. Nothing is crazy here. Two combo jacks, so we can do quarter inch or XLR. We got a switch that turns the second input from rear panel to front panel. That's how you do the guitar end on the front. Quarter inch line out, a foot switch, MIDI, two five pin dens. That's nice to see. Firewire 400. Now this is bus powered but you can also hook up an optional brick to it if you want to have it on a vintage laptop, I guess, maybe. And of course, a power switch. But what's really got me excited, what got me to click that buy now button, was this section. That I've never really seen one of these. This has got your standard function keys that you would normally see on a control surface. Maybe not eight. I think my control surface has four, but these are usually assignable in Reaper or Audur. But more importantly, we have transport control. So we can do record, stop, and play, plus uh, fast forward, rewind, or jump to the beginning or end of the selected track. I'm going to shift button. I don't know if we'll get any use out of that, but we got a jog dial for scrubbing. And if you've ever used one of these, night and day difference to be able to jog back and forth through your clips while you're editing. Hopefully all this is going to work. I really think it might, but it depends on whether or not this is using the Mackie protocol, because if it does, if it does, we should be able to plug this guy in and it's going to just work with Reaper or Audor. I'll probably try it with Reaper since I have that set up. But before we do any of that, we need to plug it in and see if it knows how to Linux. Out of the box, the Fire One's detected in Pavu control, and we have options for duplex, output, input, and pro audio because pipe wire. Neat. Over in QPW graph, we can see output capture, playback, monitor, and the MIDI ports. Moving over to QJAC CTL, we can select the Fire 1 from the interface dropdown, and hey, let's give it a start. We have two capture, two playback, along with a MIDI. Nice. Now it's time to run the Fire 1 through a 10 minute Reaper session. We want to see if we can record and playback on all of the channels without generating X runs, you know, clicks or pops. And no problems here. Nice to see. Check one, two, we're trying to get up to minus 18 dB and uh, we're about there. We're about there, but we're almost completely out of room on this preamp. Now these preamps only have 53 dB of gain each, but this is an Amazon Basics dynamic microphone and it requires about 56 dB. And I'm holding it, you know, right in front of my mouth like you would a hand mic. And um, yeah, I mean, it'll get the job done. It works, I'm, I'm really curious. I'm looking at the VU meter. I'm wondering what these stand for because that does seem to match with um minus six but uh everything else is uh does, doesn't seem to line up anyway let's try it with the uh condenser two check one two check one two check one two hey there we go now we're using the audio technica at 2020 the old podcasting classic this is what we used back in the day not really maxing this out all the gain seems to come in on that last little bit of the preamp, which is not uncommon for audio interfaces, but um, yeah, it's not maxed out. We're hitting minus 18 dB. That's good in my book. And uh, there we go. So in Reaper, I'm going to hop into the options and we're going to change the MIDI inputs and outputs to the Fire 1 and make sure we have Mackie mode selected. Jog dial seems to be working, so it does play and stop along with the record. And we can jump to the beginning and end of tracks with these guys. 
none of the function keys were assigned, so that's something you're going to have to go back and set up for yourself. Like a record, baby. Ra oh, all right. Hey, so what do we think about the Task Empire 1 in 2024? More of a curiosity, maybe? I don't know. It's not bad. Again, I bought this because I'd not seen one before. And if you go to eBay right now, there are two. I think three. One's like way overpriced, but there's like one for 65, one for 75. I wouldn't rush out and buy one. But I wanted to know whether or not it worked on Linux. And since we use the also drivers, everything worked out of the box. You plug it in, cut it on, you're done. That's it. It's just done. It's going to work with pipe wire. It's going to work with jack. All of your transport control, your spinny wheel, all of that is pretty much out of the box with, you know, Reaper, Adore, Bitfig, whatever you're going to be plugging it into. Because it's just standard MIDI. Plus, you have two 5-pins on the back if you want to hook up a additional control surface, keyboard, or anything along that line. Unfortunately, it does require using the ALSA drivers, because you noticed I didn't uh, bring up the FATO ALSA driver thing. The FATO drivers are kind of like the pro drivers for FireWire audio interfaces. And while the audio section works just fine, and it has much lower latency, the MIDI section, the control surface, is just knackered. Uh, this guy, it will kind of scroll forward, but as soon as you go back, it starts spitting out errors, and then things get chaosy and squirrely. Transport only sort of works. So that's why I didn't bother with Fado on this one. You just want to stick with also, which does mean out of the box, you know, pipe wire, pulse, jack, just no problem there. Preamps are fine. A little underpowered, 53 dB of gain. But, you know, hey, these are from 2007. If you got, you know, condenser mic, you're in good shape. You got phantom power like a low output dynamic, long as you're right up on top of the mic, because you really don't want to run these at the absolute max, because they do have a little bit of noise when they are completely flat out. Uh, having the two headphones and not being able to create custom mixes, which you kind of don't really expect, but not at this price point for what this sold for, are still kind of neat if you have two people wanting to listen to something at different volumes. Uh, the guitar in is a good one, though. I like that quarter inch high Z, just plug that right in. Yeah, everything else is pretty standard. Nothing crazy. If you run a cross one, oh, and it is bus powered, so it's not like you have to carry around a power brick. Or if you're thinking about getting one, you won't need the power brick. It'll run right off the uh, Firewire bus power. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions about content creation, video, audio production, head over to interfacinglinux.com. We got a forum, pop a question in there, and I'll get back to you myself or leave a comment on the YouTube video, as long as it doesn't require, like, you know, posting logs. If you, if we need to post logs, do it on the forums. If you get a simple question, yeah, do it on the YouTube video. Until next time, get out there, make something awesome. <laughs>